Are you in meetings in person or on screen where you're taking notes in front of folks? Well, when I'm listening to learn from a conversation, whether it's uh, with one other person or working in a whole group, I actually use a similar style of note taking for both situations. It's about understanding what I'm learning and so I can reflect back to the people in the room and I honor the obvious and also like trying to discover subtle ideas that can often get overlooked. And on today's show, I'll be sharing listening and note-taking tips that'll help you facilitate clear conversations. And I'm super curious about thoughts and wonderings what Jersey will have along the way because he does all kinds of teaching and facilitating. Welcome to a Lean Into Art Cast mini workshop episode. This is where we explore an art or creative task and demonstrate how we think about it and work on it. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, a UX designer, interactive baker, and teaching artist. So we're going to talk about listening and note taking. So what's the path we'll take, Rob? Well, so. We'll talk about why this matters. And of course, a big part of that is going to be doing a live demonstration to share um, an approach to doing this kind of listening and note taking. Um, we'll give you an example to try and you can think about, you know, exploring this in different ways. And of course, we like to celebrate the learning and what is um, what's so useful about this and when can you make something uh, worthwhile happen with this stuff. And of course, uh, there's, there's other things that we can wonder about and even like, where could this go wrong? It's listening and note taking, right? Nothing can go wrong. And actually stuff can go wrong. So let's talk about that too. <laughs> okay. So who, who is this for? Who are we, who are we making this, this workshop for today? Well, um, we all work with other folks in, in different places and whatnot. So, and, and you're going to be in situations that, can help you know, like there you may notice that oh you have an agenda or you don't have an agenda you're trying to understand so it could be um like you're trying to reach for a, a, a type of listening and it's good to have that available because you know we're all in kind of collaborative meeting, meetings for different reasons like for projects uh you could be figuring out the 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 sort of the the basic map of what's happening for the project's purpose and goals and audience um What's the next thing to create? What's the immediate work ahead or how you'll work together or who's doing what? And this is all like just functional project stuff. But then of course there's connecting with the people that you're working with. Um, are you finding ways to understand one another and to try to help everyone feel understood? So this is something you can use this uh, listening and note-taking for. And this, I think, applies to people who are possibly inter interested in becoming teaching artists as well, because that second point, making sure everyone is understanding one another and being under or feeling understood is kind of central <laughs> to a learning experience. Mm. <laughs> if, yeah. if you want to be the kind of teaching artist that people ask for again and again and pay you good money for, you're probably creating that environment in the room. This is, I think, a very important aspect to why I have found success as a teaching artist is in practicing this very careful listening and reflecting back uh, in the moment, whether it's taking notes mentally or on paper. But we're going to focus on like actually writing them down today, right? So th that reminds me, when we think about tools and how we're going to do it, are there any barriers to consider with uh, consider and like things to work around when we're doing this? Uh, well, I mean, there can be, um, a few different barriers and honestly working, it, it's always feel free to add that and mental taking notes too. That, that's a, that's a part of this certainly. Um, but then we, we are, um, we're demonstrating with actual writing down. So then you may run into figuring out tools that fit your circumstance. Uh, are you in a very digital situation or very analog one? Um, do you have the space? Uh, what are you practiced in doing too? So try to set yourself up to succeed, right? And, um, and also uh, framing this in a way that if you're starting out, it takes practice. Doing something is better than doing nothing, almost guaranteed, where uh, you can help with your own memory 
and the group's collective memory. And that's a useful thing in and of itself if nothing else comes of it. So um, helping prevent forgetfulness of everyone is, is um, you know, definitely a service. So, uh, and of course, we're going to do a specific demonstration here. We're going to go through examples of, uh, we're going to talk about listening in a couple of different ways to sort of like uh, frame up and focus on this kind of thing it is how it, how it fits. And then just jump right into doing some note taking and making use of those notes. So awesome. how are you feeling? I, I feel excited about what we're going to explore today. So let's take a, a collective breath by having a, a quick little ad break and think about, you know, some ways that you could, you who's watching or listening right now can support this project. If the work we do helps you think and do useful, creative work, a great way to let us know that is to support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Lena Tart is the website. And what is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in what we're doing here, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. And I want to thank five people who have been doing exactly that. Becca Hilburn. Thank you, Becca, for supporting us in an ongoing uh, fashion. Good to be curious. Thank you. Good to be curious. And Mike White. Thank you, Mike. And Cameron Callahan, longtime supporter of the show. Thank you, Cameron. And Brandon Dayton, who's been on the show before. You can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows that we record only for people who support us on Patreon, get you access to the, to the Patreon only channels of the lean into art discord. And we just released a new tier. We just launched the service, the lean into art monthly lab membership. And that's a way for you to meet with fellow leaners in a, in a, you know, a, well, actually, how about I just read the copy? Do you need a place to work uh, to show your work in progress? We can use all the encouragement and feedback. Have you found the gentle creative project pressure of a due date or demo day useful? The Lean Into Art monthly 90-minute lab session is a place where we host a creative group of professionals developing their projects. So each session held on the third Thursday of every month is facilitated by one of the two hosts of Lean Into Art. And both Jersey and Rob have decades of experience in teaching and facilitation of creative groups and processes for all kinds of projects. Patreon.com slash Leonator is where you will find more information about that. And thanks to everybody who supports us there. It is super meaningful. Gosh, yes. Thank you, everyone who supports us and who's about to, and Jersey for that amazing ad read. <laughs> uh, you, you, may, you make it all fit in that same song. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that means we're in the body of the mini workshop episode. So, uh, yeah, you teach me and I'll teach you, Rob. Where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, let's, let's think about, um, a few framings of listening as we're, as we're starting out. This is about preparing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in preparing it's, um, you can have a mental checklist. Um, and these framings are different sort of mental models, different kinds of listening that uh, I think if you map that, like you pick like where you're at for the, you know, like what works for your situation, each of these is incredibly um, beneficial. But if you're trying to use one that doesn't fit the situation, it's, it's, uh, it's going to get awkward probably. So, okay. So first, um, it's listening like a caring human. Okay. I'm not here to be a robot and tell you like switch gears into being human, but like, uh, <laughs> noticing that, like, are we here to just, are we here to connect? Have we connected? Do we, are, do we have, um, this, this, uh, like an attentiveness and, and awareness of, of what each other's sharing and are we responding in ways that are that are subtle and showing our presence and or our our awareness of the other like the speakers who who's you know sharing their ideas and thoughts? Um, sometimes that can be uh, nonverbal cues, and sometimes that's um, well n uh, nodding and visual cues, or even verbal stuff like "Oh, ah," or "Oh, so did you mean?" type stuff. Uh, brief, not disruptive, uh, ways to, you know, connect and show you're connecting to what people are saying with, with empathy. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, another, and Pyle chime in and comment on any of these along the way. We'll do. 
Okay. So consultant, if you're listening like a consultant, um, you're on a mission with some boundaries where it's, you have a service, you've got a process to somehow like get started and get commitment to then uh, move forward and whatever that is for you. Right. So, um, there's, there's something to navigate through there to make sure you're, you've clearly defined the problem, why you're there, what does good and, and uh, successful outcome look like? And uh, how, do, you know, how do we recognize that? And how do we wrap it up, right? And, so, and getting paid, all the logistics, consultants have a way of uh, listening with certain concerns. Mm. A leader, well, you're there to sort of uh, maybe direct and inspire. You have, you're a supporter of a combination of agendas about uh, a space allocated for a certain kind of problems and purpose and in people to, um, you know, to connected to an organization, working with a team, serving the people and what do they need to help make them successful for all involved in that picture. And, you know, you may be even thinking about, well, learning and growth on multiple levels. So are we, are we improving as a team and all that kind of stuff? You've got a lot going on as a leader. Mm-hmm. What about uh, coaching? Then, coach. You're listening like a coach? I have a whole workshop on that. <laughs> but like to touch on it, it's uh, one of the special things about listening like a coach is you're doing that sort of open listening, but you're not imposing your agenda. That's a really different mechanism. That's, that's, that's another kind of listening where you're, you're there to hear and help someone uh, navigate through their own problem as they clarify it and find a way forward. And you're not injecting your own agenda. You're not trying to solve it for them. And that's different because of course you're trying to do some, you know, problem solving and, and have some solutions in mind when you're in the other modes, but not here. Um, it's, it's, uh, and, and so, that has its whole own flow and set of mechanisms and things. Um, it certainly will, uh, will be taking advantage of certain aspects of listening like a coach, like open questions are really huge and helpful. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll use those, but, um, we're not going to be using coaching today. Um, if you want to learn more about that, I recommend checking out my workshop. Uh, it's at, uh, go to interactive storyteller.com slash store and that'll there get you, you there. All right. So then today is more about listening like a facilitator, a curious, collaborative learner. Either way, your agenda is to listen. A facilitator doesn't have to be an official role. Like you're in, you don't have to be in, ch in charge of the agenda, but you could be thinking of facilitating your own learning and connecting with what's going on, right? So you're, and you could be using uh, listening and note taking to help make that work. Um, that's, uh, yeah. And so your, your, your agenda is to, um, listen, capture ideas, reflect and notice and potentially discover. And that is our focus today. So you look very uh, thoughtful uh, right now. Uh, 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 well, it, it, a mental image comes to play of it's literally putting, uh, literally, literally a mental image is literal in my mind. It is, it, it's putting a puzzle together on the fly. There's there's mm. a sense of discovery of listening to the pieces as they spill onto the table and go like okay I think this goes here does that does that look right to everybody <laughs> right rather than mm -hmm. directing a conversation it's helping to be a wayfinder in the conversation I think that's yes that's really really helpful um, and each are potentially interesting functions of doing facilitation mm -hmm. and so. We're talking, you know, about, I guess, a portion of facilitation, right? Not exactly the whole, um, you, you know, setting timers and, you know, looking for uh, particular thresholds to cross and trying to, you know, encourage a group and make them aware and, and try to move them forward to that. It's less about the movement and more about the um, just that list, that being the sort of a, a uh, facilitator of, of knowledge and awareness. Mm, okay. So how do you personally mentally prepare for that job? Well, unless you're a full-time facilitator, this is, this can be a separate thing from your, your main work or you like, 
this may be something that's officially your role because maybe, well, you're the team's designer or something. And so it may naturally during certain sessions, you have that role as well on top of your other one. And notice it, remembering that, that that's separate, right? It's not as extreme as the separation of coaching to say that you have no agenda, but it's just about being thoughtful about your agenda. Because when you're facilitating the collective awareness and knowledge of and, and working through what the group is working through and expressing, that is, um, it can get, well, spoiled or dishonored or, or confused if you're mixing your agenda with that note taking and stuff and making sure like if you switch into one role, if you switch is like, well, as a designer, I need to comment on this thing. Be, be thoughtful about that because if, so when, so if you said, let's see, what, what did you say? Or uh, you, you like, give me a, give me any kind of reaction to this. Um, mm. And I'm going to try to take a note about it. Just a quick okay. demo. Oh, okay. Let me uh, switch over. So oh, you don't have to do that, but uh, but yeah, no, I can I can get in here with you too, right? So I can. Yeah, there we go. And I had. Uh, <laughs> there, there we, we are. Go. Okay, so just say a few things, and you're not directing me to say those things, right? Right. Like, I'm so a designer. Like we're just doing a quick quick demo, quick. Okay. Okay. Um. You know, Tuesdays are the best days of the week to meet with this group of people because there are a lot of conflicting needs from the various organizations that bring all these people to the table. And we seem to have a lot of capacity uh, between all of us on Tuesdays. Tuesdays are also a really great day to meet at that location downtown because there's less traffic given that it isn't a game day on campus. Um, we want to make sure that everybody can get in and out as easily as possible so that there's maximum amount of time to show up and be our full selves at this meeting. Awesome. So I did not get everything you said. You didn't. I, what I did though, is I started, I captured, you know, some key things and we can, um, we can always revisit if I, if I miss something, but, um, this helps us now, you know, dig further. What I didn't do and I, um, is like, you know, Tuesdays, um, the design team meets then. So that's just right out. And also conflict and needs. Um, not sure about that. And so maybe I didn't even write that. <laughs> and so that doing that kind of filtering means I'm being, I'm representing myself as a designer or my team as designers. I'm not listening to everything else. So like, don't do that. <laughs> nah, gotcha. Remember that if you're facilitating your, your, you're capturing without that as uh, with without the filtering, and we'll we'll do more demo and exploration so, of that. To to go to the sort of the metaphor of when a cartoonist writes, it's like you're supposed to turn your internal editor off and just let ideas go, right? So this is more like you're turning your internal editor off in terms of not you're not thinking about what you need or what you want. You're just listening to the information as it happens in the room and trying to capture sort of the big buckets of categories that you're, you're categorizing while you're going a little bit of that, you know, trying to make sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you're not, you're not hierarchically categorizing, but do your best to not filter. Yeah. 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 All right. Cause that is where, um, essentially you're, you're not actually hearing people. You're not, you're not listening. You're, and, and that is one of the easy ways where the things can go wrong. And we'll talk about that later too. Okay. So, all right. So you're prepared mentally. Um, and, and you need to be open. So here's the big thing. You're already aware. Okay. I know I need to shift gears and all that stuff. Take a breath, shift context to be open and connect to just what's there. And like, uh, like Jersey was saying to, you know, you, you just don't want to, um, filter that out what other people are saying. So then physically, you're going to need to prepare to like, like here right now on this show, I needed something that worked for this podcast and our podcast logistics of having something that works fast and well on screen as we're connecting and conversing. As you're connecting and conversing, like what works in your situation? Is it going to be physical tools like paper and pens, which can also work online if you have a camera pointed at stuff? Mm -hmm. um, will it be, um, note cards and, uh, like, uh, 
sticky notes or what have you that and that's that can be fine it can work online as well again so with the camera you're going to want to make sure like can people see what's written there and all that good to test and make sure that it's it'll help because otherwise your note taking can be a distraction of like i can't read that what is this what uh you know that looks very too small and stuff and so you want to make sure it's it's zoomed in enough um and then digital options well, um, oh, oh yeah, obviously another another one for physical presence. Um, can't believe I almost skipped over is is uh, dry erase boards, whiteboards, whatever you call them, and those uh, those can work uh, fine if you know they fit the room and all that stuff. But be ready as far as uh, space for categories and everything. Um, so digital options. Do you have? Um, we already mentioned camera and lighting for making that work. You can use Google Docs. If that's fine. Notes don't have to be extra visual. They can be just text. Uh, you can use even presentation or sheets too. They can function just fine for collective note um, uh, observing and taking, right? Uh, Miro is a really solid tool. Um, requires a membership, not a sponsor. And well, they, they, have, they have a free option that's like, I think you get one, one board, one white Oh, that's right. Good point. They just purchased the, uh, a web whiteboard, which I was really fond of. I was paying uh, oh. ten dollars a month for that, and they just scooped them up. And so now I'm using Miro. I'm like, okay, I guess. But uh, their their whiteboard is actually really slick. It's it's more than what I need actually, but it, it has a lot of really cool, robust features for like dropping in images and annotating things and switching from text to drawing. So did they good. did they get rid of also the features you needed? Can you still do? No, super they, challenge. I can still do Super Comics Challenge with it, so it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Shoo. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So here I'm using essentially a digital whiteboard. Like I'm sharing my screen of my tablet, and uh, I'm using an app called uh, Squid, um, and that's that's uh, that's another way to go. Either way, just be prepared. So prepare mentally, prepare physically, with the tools and space. Um, and then uh, one more thing about the, the space and tools is, um, you may have a flow or structure that, uh, is the more, you know, official you are as a, as a facilitator, it's important to maybe think of that, of having a lot of space to capture the s portions of the meeting that will have a lot of, uh, ideas and discussion, right? So having a, like the uh, thoughts on like, what am I going to do if this is filled and, being ready to, you know, continue the capture. Um, so that's, it's worth uh, considering that for the, just saying, well, maybe the, um, let's see, the, the themes or big topics, if there's a known agenda or yeah, that kind of thing. Or like when I, when I've run um, like uh, work, work sessions to explore the, like a design thinking process and whatnot, like there's a, there's always it's, it's been helpful to have separate whiteboard space or, um, you know, large sticky note space to gather, um, questions and also, um, like key resources or, um, big, big, um, you know, frictions and unknowns and stuff like that. So, and then even, it's its own category, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden you have this thing where you're like, ah, I have a portable category place to like, uh, you know, help me as, as opposed to having to mine and extract it from like one big bunch of stuff. <laughs> right. Because yes, we, we have all taken notes before where we just captured all the information linearly. And then now we've got a whole new, yes, we have, we have the order in which things were spoken, but do we have a, have we taken advantage of the visual space to categorize these things into buckets of concern and point out the dependencies between them? And within them. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, having some kind of, uh, like grouping and, uh, buckets and whatnot too, like, but it's a great metaphor. Like, what are you placing in there? And now you have a separateness that you can do stuff with. Uh, mm -hmm. you can, you can regroup and rearrange and all that, but like it's, it has an organization that makes it more explorable. That's cool. Um, so are you ready to do some playing, playing around and demoing with listening Let's and do taking? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here's something food for thought when you're starting out. Um, you may be in this, like if you're doing the facilitation stuff, um, 
you can get the group sort of acting in this, this process of connecting and building knowledge together in a low risk way, just by asking a warm up question and then you doing your note taking. So, um, let's, uh, and, and so think about that. Like if you, you come to a meeting, you're there to represent your, your concern and your specific thing and whatnot. And all of a sudden, well, you get to take a step outside of that and safely function as a group without stumbling on the big feeling stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, I, so I, so here I am being a facilitator and let's do a warm up question, Jersey, because I know there's a lot of tension in the room. I'm not going to say that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're all as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. So let's start talking to each other. <laughs> Honestly, I have done that. That's funny. And I have, I have gone there where there's been in like in meetings that are, you're like, whoa, this, yeah. I don't know where this is going to go. Let's just acknowledge that like we're from different places and I don't know how this is going to go. So yeah. let's, let's try this out. I, I so playfully do this with, with middle schoolers, actually. I'll say like, I know oh, it's first nice. thing in the morning and you're all terrified of revealing something to one another. So let's get uncomfortable together. <laughs> 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 so anyway, but so what's the prompt? What, how, Racing, what kind of things right. do you prompt people? Okay. So here's a, here's a sample. Uh, ask an open question like this. Um, so imagine, think about all of history and the cool things that, that, that you think have been super helpful for us humans. And those are inventions. What invention do you wish you could have created? And if you feel like sharing, why? Okay, that's that's. Uh, I'll be playful and say this is an easy one. Uh, I wish okay. I would have invented the veggie hot dog, but before there were hot dogs, uh, because I think the hot <laughs> the, the hot dog is almost a perfect food. And when I think about them, I think about baseball games and summertime, and I think how, how joyful they are. But I also think about, oh, why do we have to take a life in order to have that joy? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just harvest plant materials to make this wonderful, wonderful product and enjoy summertime um, in, in a way where none of us even never even considered bringing an animal into the picture? Uh, so it would have been around, you know, 1870. And I would have invented the veggie hot dog. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. So this is, uh, I'm just going to, so this is something that may come up. Uh, I would, I just wrote history and made a big sunburst out of it. Right. And I'm celebrating what you just shared because mm -hmm. so, you know, I did, so I captured a note. We can see it on the screen. And I can adjust my zoom a little bit to um, play with that. So it invented. So what I heard is like inventing the veggie hot dog. Now imagine more people share their, you know, inventions, right? So mm -hmm. let's, so if I, if I switch hats out of, uh, out of facilitator, um, let's, I don't, uh, what would I have invented? Um, honestly, I think I try to rewind time. I think, I, I think of the biggest regret in my career, which is, to, to try to set up a better example for using uh, preferences and personalization um, because, uh, yeah, anyway, that's, it would have been neat to have a different, a different story in a way to engage with that and maybe pattern of business, business ethics and things because I was building an intranet and, you know, we were using a thing called personalization server by Microsoft and I thought, huh, we're all going to get in bubbles. And anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do much with that. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, but continuing on, uh, what, so do, do you want me to do so another one? Talked about that, like, oh, should okay, we do no. another? Yeah. So, or no. let's like, do we feel warmed up? Right. And I, so, you know, I felt like I exposed do, do myself a, a little bit. Uh, no, no. I, I feel like that exercise playfully asked me to expose part of my point of view. I just shared a lot of things in that. I said, mm -hmm. I love baseball. I love hot dogs. I'm a vegetarian for, because, for purposes of uh, ethical considerations in the way we treat animals. Right? I just put all that on the table okay. in a very playful way. So whether or not I realize that I've shared my perspective with the room. Mm. So 
that is a really awesome thing that you just pointed out because yeah, that making it safe to point out and accept where we are, uh, that's going to be a different meeting than one that shows up with, you know, another facilitator thing. This isn't explicitly about facilitation. One that shows up with a ton of status and power as the heart of the meeting, as opposed Mm. to exploration and understanding and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, because yeah. And so you, you did go to a really cool place that, which is an ideal thing that really opens things up and, and hopefully more people are, are open and connecting and diving into the shared purpose of why you're all there. And so, um, so, hey, hopefully we're ready to go to the next part, right? Yeah. We I, did I, a warm-up. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And, and, and if I were facilitating, that would be something that I would try to, depending, I'd feel out the room and I would unpack that right in front of them. So what you just told me is these three things. Is that true? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. how cool is that? Right? Celebrate that. Um, but again, it depends on the tone of the room, for sure. Right. A very, yeah. Um, so I, I was... Yeah, to the the brief mention of like noticing. So you can notice things about what people say. And I said, oh, history. I'm like, how cool. You had a very specific date about that particular invention. Like that, mm. that shows um, like, I mean, clearly you've looked into the background of this thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, like we could think of all kinds of things. Like uh, it would have been neat to invent, oh, I don't know, money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Right. Or yeah. Uh, or even video games or something, you know, like you pick like something like that, but you may not know all you know, extra stuff around it. But I was lightly, maybe too, too reserved in just celebrating like, Oh, cool history. Like, and very specific. Right. Mm. But, uh, but those are, that's, those are awesome examples. So, uh, yeah. Hybrid meta facilitation style conversation as we, as we go. All right. Yeah. Which is awesome. So, um, now, so let's say we're ready, we're warmed up and we're going to go to the next, the, to the next thing. We have something on the agenda, but here we are in the podcast. We don't actually have a meeting other than we're doing the podcast and sharing this topic with you. Right. So now, um, I would love it if, uh, if we could pick one of these, uh, facilitation questions, which mm. by facilitation question, I mean, whether or not you're the official facilitator, you can ask an open question of the group that fits with the agenda. So you care about moving stuff forward of why you're all here, but isn't prescriptive enough to say, and I think we should just do this. I'm trying to tell you what to do. Just be open, right? So let's pick one of these open questions um, to, um, to, to do another demo. Okay. Do you want to name the questions and then we can pick one? Yeah, that's what I would love to do. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so, okay. And so by all means, take these into your toolbox. Here's one. What are your hopes and fears for this project? Next, what is something you feel most confident about? And what is something that you feel least confident about, about this project? And we can add on to that. Why confident? And what would you improve to obviously make the least confident things better? Okay. So then, uh, what is our top priority to fix and or build next with this project and why? And finally, um, well, how could we do a better job deciding what's important on this project in a way that's more inclusive? Okay. So, yeah, they're all influential in different ways. They um, are. And let me, if we could step aside and be meta just for a second, as I think about mm-hmm. the people who would engage with this in the different groups I've worked with, the what questions feel very concrete right? Uh, the how question feels more abstract. Mm -hmm. And so depending on what the room felt like and what kind of people I was working with, I might lean, I might put my thumb on the scale a little bit. If I was getting a lot of resistance and staring at me, I would say, Mm -hmm. okay, well let's, let's focus on the first couple. What are your hopes and fears of this project? What is something you feel most confident about and something you feel least confident about? Can we name something specific there? Right? So if I'm going to step back into the group's role, I would say, okay, um, I'm afraid that we are going to miss something and make our customers angry. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm afraid of making customers angry. I'm afraid of fielding customer support emails or phone calls. 
All right. So we so you picked one and we're rolling with it. Yep. With uh, okay. So uh, so hope fears convenient categories, and then um, afraid we're miss miss something. And this is something that like I'll actually say this out loud too. Like I'm as I'm writing, I'll say, oh, afraid we're miss something. Why did you choose that language instead of me saying I'm afraid of taking uh, customer service calls? You know, because I honestly forgot what you said. <laughs> That's awesome. He's like, what so, I was grabbing onto there is what you were saying is you're pointing at the fear of uh, not serving well. The second part uh, of my sentence was, I'm afraid of the consequence of not serving well. But right. notice that, so this misunderstanding can lead to clarity. So like, let me let me get what you said right. So again, so you're afraid we'll... Um, miss, miss something. Mi no, no. Um, you're, you were concerned about the oh. customer support calls? Yes. I'm afraid we'll have to deal with angry customer support uh, calls. Angry support calls specifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And notice that. So I'm commenting on trying just so. Because Rob, you I don't know that, what it's Jersey like said, to deal with mm -hmm. those calls. You don't know. It's I, tough. I don't. What, what your... Your, your precise experiences, and this helps me see things from, from your point of view that, that matter to you. So did we, so is that, I know, let me resize this so we're all seeing, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I don't want to do. I'm, I, oh, right. the, the, our customers are a surly bunch and I just want them pacified. I want to make sure that we're doing a good enough job that nobody's angry. All right. So I want to do a good job. So, okay. What about, is there anything that you hope about this project or is, or should I have put that in the hope category? Uh, I guess that would go in the hope category. I, I hope I do a good job so that nobody's angry. All right. Gotcha. So nobody's angry. So nobody's angry. Wow. And so any, you know, I'm hearing you right when I say that. So nobody's angry. And then I said, wow. Um, because I, that sounds like a big one. Um, do you want me to continue per being the, so, the person at the meeting? Um, and, or you could shift gears, uh, too. Okay. So, so, um, persona wise, let's say, let's say you are a, let's see, you, you, you sound like someone who is dealing with stuff on the front lines quite a bit. What about, um, what if you are someone who is, uh, in like an adjacent department, right? Mm -hmm. What if you're in, what if you're in legal? Hmm. Okay. So here you are, Jersey. You're you're from legal, uh, but you had a good breakfast. Go. <laughs> um, I hope that we can roll out new services in the fourth quarter, so as to make a, a more robust system for our users. So new services in the fourth quarter. Uh, and more robust for our users. Okay. Because responding to that other person, you know, we'll probably have a lot less frustrated, angry calls if we're creating more rich interactions for them on the website. Excellent. Okay. So, um, Sounds okay. I think I got that. Uh, roll out new services and all that. Um, is there anything that you're worried about then about this project? Uh, I, I'm I'm worried that we're not going to get the trademarks filed in time. Mm. Timeline of trademark filing. Yeah. All right. Uh, always helpful to get things on the positive and, and uh-oh cases here. Um, okay, awesome. So, and then 
to try to, you know, continue around the room. And there's different ways of facilitating that. But in particular, we're talking about the note taking and stuff. And you're in the situation of when, when you're the pen, you're the pen for yourself always, right? But then you may be the pen for the group too. So this is the, in the case of you're the pen for the group. Mm. So, uh, because it can be logistically way simpler when there's just one person doing, doing this job, uh, mm. either officially or unofficially. Um, because if you're unofficially doing this, then, then, you know, all of a sudden I'm the, as the note taker, uh, I can say, okay, so after we gather, um, the hopes and fears, are we going to try to, uh, group these and then unpack them more? Because I'm seeing like potentially a lot to work on. So mm -hmm. how could we, you know, um, then take this and, and move forward on the project. Right. And how, so try to get the, uh, you know, thinking about the group and understanding and whatnot to try to add to the knowledge and not chaos to try to have clarity, not ambiguity as best you can. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so as, as you're taking these notes too, and you're listening to the language that I'm saying, as I take these different persona roles, are you coming to any kind of, uh, guesses as to like, are you inferring anything about the worldview of the people as they're talking to inform what prompts you use next or no? Or do you try to suspend that judgment? I am. Well, definitely trying to uh, suspend the judgment because okay. especially if you're modeling this whole thing for the group, if you're in your own notebook, I guess roll out the judgment as much as you want. But if you're writing it, so, so judgment and filter is a, I would say is a kind of filtering that, that, um, if you're there as a group to sort of like collectively decide things, right. Um, so it means how you, you're, you're doing a form of governance and that's, mm -hmm. that's what that behavior is. You're doing, um, group decision-making, which gets all kinds of negative flack and what have you, but like, we got to work together. We're a collective species. Let's figure stuff out together. So the one way to do that, you know, and that leads to uh, more understanding and clarity is to to not uh, to not judge as best as you can along the way. But then you need to, right? Because if we say, well, related to last week's episode, if we say yes to everything, um, then that has its own side effects. So, but we need to filter thoughtfully with the collective expertise. Is, mm. is one way to look at it. That's, that's, I guess, making more explicit a, um, a principle I have about facilitating. Also, I'm noticing that you're using, uh, you're not capturing every word I'm saying. You're right. doing some paraphrasing, but in, in the, the, the general sense, you're like capturing accurate, accurate words from me, but you're throwing out a lot of stuff and just focusing on like, you're, you're on the fly, you're, you're assessing a central idea based on what that person said. Yeah. I'm trying to look for like action, like nouns that you can take action on that mm. will help us, uh, that fully represent the idea mm. as best as I can, you know, being held accountable in the moment where it's like, okay, does this work? And asking and staying connected with the group, does this seem to, to say that what, um, and, you know, hopefully providing an, a, 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 like a, a kind and caring enough space and presence when I ask that question. So people know it's okay to say, nah, I, what I really meant was, and then, then I, okay. Ah, so that, and so then I positively reinforce that. I'm like, oh, aha. So I was wrong in this, this, to, we can, I can fix that. So that me, you know, then I'll recapture that note. Mm -hmm. um, like it, like for instance, the, the person from the legal department, I said timeline instead of the, um, the amount of time it takes to do the, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, trademark. Yeah. It's like, so I can name that. I can name that in a clear way. And so I'm looking, I'm looking for those, those opportunities to, uh, to capture enough that we can reflect on and, and, uh, to serve us with, you know, next making use of this. There's an awful lot of acknowledging and saying yes to people in this situation, right? There's a lot of, okay, I heard you. This is what I think I heard. Is that right? Yes. No. Okay. If you give me some more information, I'll revise it and keep going. But it's, it's accepting people where they are, right? Um, that, 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 that is, I think, like 
this is my classroom experience entirely is like, I want to make sure every young person in that room feels like they belong in there. Right. Mm. And belonging. And yes. Cre you're creating a space for belonging. Mm. And that, whatever, awesome. whatever your, you know, your experience level or your, you know, your, your cognitive uh, development is, I'm going to make space for that here. And I'm going to acknowledge and reflect uh, welcoming, a welcoming uh, attitude toward it. And no thought is off the table provided that we follow up and get some contextualization behind that thought. I, I think that that's something that I, when I'm facilitating, I'm trying to think about too. Because you can't feel like you belong if you feel like the, something you say is going to make you out of the group. So... That, yep, yeah, that is huge. Like, what, if you're really representing the group, you're representing everyone in the group. Yep. And that is a, and that takes work. But I think it's, it's a pretty rewarding path once you start it. It's a pretty, uh, it's also, it's, it's enabling because you, you've set aside your judgy voice and you're just working toward um, collective clarity voice. And, and that has uh, a pretty, well, a, a job that isn't uh, laden down with other agendas. So, um, okay. So what do you think about, um, like, so what we did was, so we did, a, we did a prompt and we did the listening and capture and we did some reflection. And so, you, you know, helping honor the, what people said and, uh, you know, make adjustments along the way. But then... Uh, well, let's say we finished the meeting. Now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you have a bunch of notes and then, uh, what do you do with that? Do you just, well, put them in your pocket and say, thanks. <laughs> um, I put them in my Microsoft SharePoint file and nobody can find it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, SharePoint. <laughs> Gosh, what an interesting <laughs> idea. I have a lot of baggage about. Um, that's Somehow how, I knew. <laughs> yeah, I actually studied the heck out of SharePoint right, right in the early 2000s. Um, so anyway, the uh, right, but that's but right. Where does it go? So where do the notes go after this? Mm -hmm. um, think about, well. It's not too huge of a bur or a burdensome of a thing to at least complete the communication cycle to say, you were heard, we understand this, this is where we're at, we navigated a conversation, this is where we landed. And so you can just, whatever is appropriate within your group to send them to the group. You could be dealing with trade secrets and all this stuff. And so then the SharePoint's going to be perfect because, you know, there's an official thing and you do that thing. Or if you're in a more, um, you know, casual, accountable through different mechanisms way, then you can just take a picture of the, of the wall uh, or take and, you know, make sure it's a good one. Zoom in and double check that you got it before you erase it or throw those sticky notes in a drawer or throw them away, recycle, what have you. Um, it's, uh, you know, you capture it and then share it back with the group. And you, so now you've completed a cycle of communication and learning and serving the group. And now you may have to switch, switch which hat you're wearing again. So maybe you go back to your, your primary role and uh, you're no longer that facilitator and it's time to engage in a different way. So any, any other thoughts about the completing this, the, the so cycle? I, I work with different orgs where minutes or notes are captured and then distributed via either an email or a Slack channel and something that I've seen some facilitators do and not others is they'll actually write down a bullet point of list summarizing everything that's on that document. Do you ever mm -hmm. do that? That's a good point. So you're, you're um, right. So you have the message, but um, you have the sort of attachment to the message, but then you have some context. It's really good to wrap it in some kind of context. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly um, put this into um, some kind of, you know, con Con clarified contextual thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where it could include a summary, but at least it'd be label it well, right? Like this is what we talked about. This is the purpose. 
this is what we were landed in. Like whatever it is, give it a clear title, clear subject. Don't say meeting. Don't say, <laughs> you know, stuff or notes or whatever. But like, oh what gosh. are they about? Get some more nouns in there. And even uh-huh. like, like a, like a title of what we realized talking about the, the, um, our worries for Q1, right? Yep. And what's next or whatever it is like clarity should guide as opposed to, you know, terse and convenient. So a summarize of, of uh, key bullet points can, uh, can really help. Cause again, you're, you're, in, you're increasing the, the, like your own individual and the group's uh, memory to potentially connect with what was, uh, what was meaningful and what needs further action taken upon it. Um, there you go. And uh, the thing that I think about when I see things like that happen is, is that they are honoring different learning modalities. There are people who are more visual oh. thinkers who can actually need things color coded and spread out on a giant sheet of paper. There's some people who just need a simple list to look at in order to understand what was actually spoken about. So it, that is another kind of inclusivity that I think is important with this kind of facilitation. Um, and then also it's, it's like, a really nice fine line between like, as you said, convenient or efficient brevity versus rich context. I think that's, that's an important thing to think about is that yes, a lot of us have too many emails to look at and reading through a big thick email is an eye roller, but just sending me a JPEG of a whiteboard. I'm, I didn't take the notes. I might not remember the context of all of those different things that were captured. So having a little bit of extra context could be extremely useful, especially if I'm a non-visual thinker. That is an excellent point. Um, that is So that document probably serves, for the most part, the people that were present. Mm-hmm. So that knowledge may need to get turned into other forms where it may not be enough, even putting some kind of brief summary on it and sending a message saying like, Oh, here's what we talked about. And this is how I summarized it. Uh, that'll hopefully be really uh, beneficial for those who attended, maybe not for those who didn't, um, because, because of different learning styles and because of how, uh, it's, this is something I've, I'm just really curious about what happens to our memory when we have extra, you know, extra visual cues and stuff, right? So taking notes, um, uh, and adding doodles and visuals and stuff like that. It's, um, it's something that I've, I, that's an, another topic to probably dive into is, mm-hmm. is uh, visual note taking and even mm-hmm. visual note taking as a mode for a group. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah. Doing that is a, is its own, uh, interesting specialty. Well, so, I feel like we walked around this pretty thoroughly. Do you want to take a break and then maybe talk about a prompt to try for uh, everybody who's playing along? I Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so if this, by the way, everybody, if this discussion and these mini workshop episodes help you to think and do useful creative work, another way that you can support this project is by interacting with the stuff that we make. And the thing that I make that I hope you'll check out is the 4 Million Years Later podcast. It is a free thing that you can interact with. And it answers the question, does creativity thrive in freedom or in constraints? It is a story analysis podcast wherein the subject of study is the 1980s Transformers cartoon where we watch an episode a week and dig deep to explore the story's structure, meaning we infer the writer's intentions and synthesize them within the context of conflicting needs of a daily television show explicitly designed to advertise, advertise toys. Does it get deep? You'll be surprised at how deep it can get sometimes when you look at these uh, advertisements for toys. You can find it at 4millionyearslater.com and in pod catchers everywhere. So, Rob? Ha. I make a product called, uh, well, Listening Like a Coach. It's a workshop and some PDF materials to help you connect with all, like some, some beginner and advanced skills with um, a kind of listening that can help you and folks you work with get unstuck with how they're thinking about projects and goals and just, you know, being a, being a human making things. Well, 
uh, you know, do people ever ask you for advice? Do people want to bounce ideas off of you and get your thoughts on a decision? Well, listening like a coach is something you can do to help them get unstuck and navigate and find a way forward. Because in this style of listening, you will uh, not be putting in your own agenda, but you'll be using this style and this flow to, um, to, to get them to sort of, you know, unpack and solve and, and find a way to move forward, uh, without your, um, without your recommendation, right? It's, it's, uh, you're, you're here to help them. And to learn that, just go to gum road to gum.co slash L L A C W S. That's where I have this workshop on sale for you. Um, you can buy a few different versions of it. There's, uh, the, uh, the, you can get the video and the the PDF. You can get um, a well. You can get that plus a meeting with me for Q and A, and you can do that for either yourself one on one or your whole team. And that's all at listen. Uh, well, it's listening like a coach, which is at gum.co slash l l a c w s. Okay, so. We said at the top that we were going to have an example for people to try. So how can we make an example for people to try with this kind of workshop, Rob? Well, for instance, you could take notes during this podcast. Woo! <laughs> um, <laughs> so we make lots of examples that you can uh, use, this to, use this to follow along and, and uh Get, get, uh, work through the mechanics of that, the listening and note taking and, and summarizing what you're hearing. Uh, you could do this with any, honestly, show, uh, video stream, uh, what have you, uh, and then just get that sort of the note taking aspect of it down and the listening, uh, and, and what you end up capturing, but mm. then do this live, right? You don't have to do this with something pre recorded. The whole point is like the, the, the live connection is what you're building up to. Take notes during a call with a friend. Hmm. Yeah. And if you're feeling, you know, extra up for it, then take notes at, at a meet, team meeting with any project you're working on. Even if you're a solo consultant, there's, you're, you're dealing with folks at some point that, um, you know, someone else that you're, you're meeting with or communicating um, in that live session, uh, do the note taking and, then the, the the final challenge would, would be to do that in a way that they can see the notes too. And now you're, now you're doing that to facilitate. Mm. So there's a, there's a ramp up, right? <laughs> okay. So if I want to embark on that ramp, what do I need to give it a shot? Like what materials do you suggest? I know you talked about a lot of different kinds of materials. Well, uh, I think the mental space is a big one because for that is novel for a lot of folks to be like, wait, I'm doing this where without my agenda and all that. So, um, so let's, let's do the, you know, remember the mental, um, preparation, but then, uh, of course you have the tools and the space, like, where are you getting set up to do this? Um, and, uh, the the summary slide is welcome, by the way. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, yeah. I was I, I wasn't sure, but yes. There we go. Uh, okay. So th that was fine because this is a really good summary. So when you're watching the video, you can see this this uh, this is a good set of like what do you need to do this kind of listening and note taking. Mm. So you've got the space, tools, and mindset. Just have that checked off. If you're if you're you know you feel ready for that, then then you're ready. Uh, remember that there's kind of a flow of the whole prompt and listening and capture. The prompt is a soft recommendation. If, and if you're officially a facilitator, then you're for sure going to prompt the group based on some agenda. But uh, the, otherwise, this flow of listen, capture, reflect is, is uh, where you're going to be. Uh, then, you know what? Having a, some safe warm-up, some open questions that don't go into heavy space that are some, they're still, fun, you know, some, somehow engaging in, you know, curiosity invoking. That's collect those. Those are nice to have. And, you know, you don't want to repeat them with the, with the same group, right? So you're going to probably need more than one. So be ready to do a safe warm up. Um, and then as you go along, you've got your shared agenda. Uh, do one question at a time and do this process of prompt, listen, capture, reflect. And th at the end, 
share that learning, share back with the group. Um, it, it completes a cycle. You're, you're hopefully going to be a bunch of positive signals by, by, you know, bringing that back to the group, uh, honoring that effort and time you had together and also, um, ways to make use of that for what, what's next and what lies ahead. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm reminded also of, I went to an event called nerd camp for many years when I lived in Michigan and at one event, they had a panel discussion with like 12 authors and then like a whole bunch of librarians in the audience. And there was me and one other artist in the, the panel lineup. And I, I said to him, like, why don't we just like sketch note this whole thing while they're talking? And so we took a couple of big notepads behind the, the, the panel of authors. And we were capturing all these ideas visually while they're talking about it. And then at, after the panel was over, like 50 librarians bum rushed the stage with their cameras <laughs> to take pictures ah, of all ah. the notes. Like, I want to remember this. I'm like, well, instead of getting their picture taken with the author, there's like, they wanted the notes. They, like, we, they forgot about us entirely. They just wanted this artifact of that experience. That, like, this kind of like capturing of the idea and summer, that, that clear summarization can be a really powerful tool of, a, or a powerful artifact of a time together. So I just want to jump on that language that you used there, Rob. I think that's really great. Um, so anything left to wonder about as we wrap this one up? Well, um, let's see. I think there's a, there's the positive side of it, of things you might not have expected, like you just mentioned, but there could be, you know, let's talk about the, the negative case too. Like where could this go wrong? Um, it's pretty neat where someone's like, your notes, this is awesome. Give me your <laughs> notes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but, but it doesn't always, uh, that's not the only thing that can come of this. We're like, uh, connecting with a group and asking open questions and noticing the things people might notice stuff that they didn't notice before. And you might uncover big stuff. You might uncover big feelings like, um, I won't go, you know, name names or what have you. Uh, but I do this even if I'm in a job interview, Right. And I was in a job interview that I was doing this kind of, you know, listening and capturing and sharing back with the group. And, and there was a big event that had really felt bad for a lot of people. And mm. it was essentially, there was a kind of, um, uh, it's, it's a, it's a really crappy metaphor, but they call it in software, a death March, right? Mm. It's like when you're in an unsustainable, super duper intense deadline or series of deadlines and it just doesn't let up and people aren't getting sleep and, and. And like, I just played the role of listening and, and note taking and a lot of stuff came out and I, and part of me was part, like if in my agenda, I learned enough, enough to where I like, I don't want to work here. But like, um, yeah. uh, but also I was like, gosh, these, I, I was like hearing like so much, you know, frustration and need that had was untapped and unmanaged and un like worked with. Right. And I was like, yeah. wow. Big feelings can get uncovered just by doing this, just by asking the questions and, and noticing the stuff. And all of a sudden, people aren't just sort of letting a thing slip by. Now you're building on top of it, which might build towards something negative. You don't know. That's a good point. Yes, I've served on various boards in the past. And in the, in the past, I, I served on um, homeowners association boards. And I used my technique of carefully listening and, and, and doing the mirroring that you do to say like, Hey, I'm holding eye contact with you. I'm responding with facial expressions that correspond to the emotion that you're expressing right now, that kind of thing to make them feel like they're, they're in a safe space where they can share and they feel listened to and trusted. And other people on the board didn't necessarily do that. They had techniques to say like, okay, we're going to shut that down really quick because this could easily spin out of control. And because I opened the door, I created moments sometimes where we're sharing an awful lot here. There are things being said now that I'm not so sure we should be discussing in this context. There's more pain going on here than what was immediately apparent. And, you know, so like I wound up holding spaces for people sometimes I didn't expect beyond a homeowners association board. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, it, you it is definitely a power and we should respect it's a that power, power. And there's a, there can be an unfortunate scarcity for some people who, yes. when they encounter this, they suddenly ha realize they need it and, and whatnot. Yeah. And it's all valid, right? Yes. Uh, but you can just, you can run into that. Um, mm -hmm. so yep. there's times also as, as, as far as the, the mishearing people being purposeful and systemic, and 
I honestly, I can't think of a time when I, that's been my thing, but because I think about this a lot, I notice when people are doing it mm. and, and of course you can use note taking and listening, reflecting to then notice that they're doing it and have everyone notice that they're doing it. <laughs> so, that's that's pulling a Qui Gon Jin. That's where like, hey Jedi Council, you're saying this, <laughs> but, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and everybody's gonna see that I'm doing that. <laughs> so your mileage may vary. That yeah. is a that is that is a challenging power dynamic thing. So yeah, you know, things happen when you challenge a power dynamic. So um, I'll, then there's just a little thing of like, honestly, being the note taking nerd isn't always cool. Right. And, yeah. um, yeah, yeah some people can feel, one. I'm sure you've run into this and I know I've run into this where people feel like there's something intrusive about the way you talk with them. Right. Like back off Jack, why are you being so nosy about my life? And I'm like, Oh, I actually, I was just like super interested in the people around me, you know? And it's like, can't right. we keep this, can't we keep this mellow and small talk? Oh, certainly. Sorry. Right. You know, uh, I have other friends who, talk in 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 discuss the way that we do and they have reported the same experience of people feeling like okay this is it's weird that you're writing down what i'm saying it's weird that you're asking me so many follow-up questions about this just let it go punch out right yeah yeah so good to know you know worth noting yep um let's see what are um Anything else? Anything else? Are there wondering and questions? I'm I'm curious. Um, you know, clearly there's way more ways that this can go. This I, this can go. That's but in my experience, the pros outweigh the cons by a, a, a an enormous margin because it is so easy for me to get engaged at a networking event because of these skills. Because I have the presence of mind to stop and listen to somebody and really make it about them for a little while. It's it's easier to get, I don't want to sound like this manipulation because it's not, but it's easier to create a space with trust for me. I can create spaces where people feel like they're trusted and listened to because I practice this technique in my classrooms, um, regardless of the scenario, regardless of the, um, I was, I was in a meeting recently in the, I would say in the past 12 months with a, pres, uh, a potential hiring agent, like a, an, an entity who wanted me to do presentation and teaching work with them. And I am not kidding. In the first like 15 minutes, they said, okay, we wanted to hire you to do this one thing. Can you do five things? You know, because they felt like I was there to help them and listen to them and support what they were trying to do. And I made that clear very rapidly, right? So, that, so that's worth a couple what people a great saying. Example. Like, yeah. yeah, that's worth a couple people saying Jersey's weird. <laughs> 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 I yeah, I mean wholeheartedly agree. It's it's a it's certainly um, it, it's a way to help get done the things that you really want to get done and help them and because they matter to you, right? It's not about manipulation. It's it's you know things get done when there's more trust with without trust when you work in a space that has less psychological safety uh you're dealing with dealing with stuff and as opposed to getting stuff that you care about done mm. um and it's in the, and that's a hard thing to to have be sustainable um mm -hmm. so yeah so definitely a uh, lot of a uh, lot of reasons and uses for for doing this kind of uh, you know ref reflective listening and note taking kind of thing, and yeah, we'll probably revisit this in other forms, future mini workshops, like oh, totally. doing doing like a emphatically visual version. I could see. Oh yeah, so. I have I have a lot of I have a lot of big thoughts on that, so that'll be a follow up workshop. Um, okay, well, cool. So let's all try to do some visual or some note taking and careful listening. Um, and you know, if you want some more rich detailed version of this, they can all check out listening like a coach, which they can find at, at gum, gum.co slash L L A C W S. There we go. And then please consider liking this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe, but like the video that helps more people find the video. If you're listening to it in audio, please consider writing, giving us a five-star review wherever you listen to us or writing a review. That's even better. Uh, and you can find the show at lenatart.com and patreon.com slash lenatart. Until next time, I have been Jersey Drozd of lenatart.com and rss.jdrozd.com.
That's awesome. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger. Uh, just go to my blog, interactive-storyteller.com. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.